Hello, I'm Darren Ravel from the Action Network, and it's time for week nine of five picks in five minutes, five and five, presented by BetMGM. And we are joined by Chris Raybon, who has been very sharp this football season. I think I even retweeted how sharp he was in a nice graphic put together by the folks at the Action Network. We were two and three uh, last week. I was 0-2, of course. Chris was 2-1. Uh, what a week it was. Uh, just some of the epic comebacks by the Panthers, the Commanders um, uh, on the covers, and then my guys losing to the Packers, my reasoning being that I hated Aaron Rodgers, and adding an additional like point and a half on an alt line to get plus 100, and then not even coming close to to the hook, which everyone else got. Uh, you got to get that think? hate out of your heart, Darren. You got to get that hate out of your heart. That, that I know, because you don't win. You, you, you don't win. So just to recap, through eight weeks, I am 5-11. and 11. Chris is 13-10-1. and one. Uh, And a reminder, uh, this show is presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Uh, they have a great offer. If you sign up for the first time with BetMGM and you enter the code ACTION, uh, you will get a thousand dollars risk-free first bet on BetMGM. All right, let's get after it, Chris. Uh, give me your first pick. Well, when I jump on BetMGM, what's calling me is those Washington Commanders yet again, plus three and a half at home against the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota's six and one, but they've actually been outgained on average three eighty-three to three forty-six. This year, meanwhile, Washington, they've outgained Green Bay handily by over 100. Uh, Indianapolis, they outgained as well in Heineke's two starts. They're eighth in EPA per drop back on defense since they benched and subsequently traded William Jackson. And on offense, Washington matches up well as well. Minnesota's dead last in DVOA against number one wide receivers. Terry McLaurin has seen his target share and his production skyrocket with Heineke behind center. So Heineke, eight and two against the spread in his last 10 games. Meanwhile, Kirk Cousins coming off a win, just 13, 22 and one against the spread in his time with the Vikings. So I expect a little bit of a flat performance here from Minnesota going on a rope. <laughs> All right, we're actually kind of agreeing here because I'm taking uh, the over here of 43 and a half. Uh, you're seeming to say that the the uh, commanders are going to score a couple more points. I think they've been averaging like 14 points. If I can get to 17 or 20, the Vikings have been averaging 28 points over their last four. I think 43 and a half is a low number. And listen, uh, when I take an over, you better listen because I take about 97.5% unders. You say that on this show all the time and then you pick an over. I'm beginning to not believe well, you. You, you need more people. I, I, I Listen. You uh, don't believe you. You need more people. Well, I need to, I, I need to win. I, I think uh, Kirk Cousins coming back, little motivation. He'll get there. I, I, I don't hate the Heineke pick, but I think uh, – I will like that when I cover the 43 and a half with the over. What's your second pick, Chris? I am going with the Jets Bills under 47. You have two top 10 defenses in this game, and that might surprise some people. But the Jets, I've been saying this for weeks now, they are very, very good. They're actually the best defense the Bills have faced all season, which is important because Bills were already six and one toward the under this year. The Jets, five and three as well. And the Bills have faced three offenses outside the top 20, like the Jets are. They've held them to a combined average of 6.7 points with a high of 10. So I think divisional game here, in divisional games played outdoors this year, by the way, 19 and six toward the under, 76%, 55 and 33 to the under 63% uh, since the start of last season. So. Give me the Jets, Bills under with two very good defenses uh, in East Rutherford. All right, I'm, I'm uh, I kind of really like that pick too. I feel like we don't have the necessary tension that we promised our sponsor. <laughs> so my second pick is going to be the Bengals minus seven and a half against the Carolina Panthers. Um, I just like this spot for the Bengals. They get blown out by the Browns. Uh, the Bengals in their last 16 games are 13-3 against the spread. Uh, I feel like this is a comeback game for them. And I think that, uh, I mean, 
yes, without Matt Rule, but they're still the Panthers. They still have to wear that uniform. I'm not concerned going on beyond the seven, and I will take them seven and a half. I even would take them up to nine and a half, but I learned my lesson last week when I tried to do Bill's alternate line 12 and a half. Uh, Chris, what do you think about that, and what's your next pick? <laughs> I was waiting for this because my next pick is the Carolina Panthers ah. plus seven and a half on the road against these Cincinnati Bengals. Listen, the Bengals are on a short week, right? They just played on Monday. So they're not going to be able to fix everything that was wrong in that disaster against the Browns. First of all, you're without your best receiver in Jamar Chase. Joe Burrow averaging over 10 yards in attempt to chase, under eight to everybody else. You're also without your best run defender in DJ Reader. You went from a top five run defense to a bottom five run defense without him. And now you lost your best cover corner in Chidobe Awujie. So single digit road dogs against a home favorite on short rest, 133, 95 and seven, 58% against the spread since 2005. And then Joe Burrow, just one and four against the spread when favored by a touchdown or more. Meanwhile, PJ Walker, Four and one against the spread as a starter all time, covering by an average of 16 and a half points per game. Give me those Panthers. So it's up to you guys now. Who do you want to go with? Me, who has been five and 11, or Chris, who's been 13, 10 and one. Uh, hey, Rich Kotite would love that. Would love that record. <laughs> I would. That is true. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would. Uh, I, I am going to say that this is going to be the face off that I am finally going to win. Okay. Uh, that'll do it for this week. That's our five picks in five minutes. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so you never miss an episode. Good luck, everyone.